that gets me to the question that I wanted to ask Melody. You know, as someone who worked in the White House, and I know you are loyal to President Obama, I mean, one of the things that we hear frequently from pundits and politicians in Washington is that he's a little bit aloof. He stays above the fray. He doesn't reach out in the way that a Bill Clinton or a Ronald Reagan did to members of the opposition. And last night when I did a press panel, I asked if there was one thing they could suggest to the president. One of the big things was schmooze a little more. I wonder if you think that part of what's going on is that we have a president who doesn't really like to get down into it. Well, I, I, you're right. I, I worked in that White House for three years. I know the president. Um, and I am loyal to my colleagues and to the president. But I can also say objectively, I don't think that's a fair characterization of what's going on. And I also think people need to be realistic about the person that they elected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think any of us went into this thinking that you know, Barack Obama was someone who was going to you know, walk through this room and this tent and, and hug everyone. And that wasn't his personality. And in some ways, I think it's something that people appreciated about his personality. But I don't think it's accurate at all, looking at the many battles that I participated in, to say that he didn't get down into the battle. You know, I think about our efforts to try and move immigration all through the first term of the administration. And you know, day after day, and the calls and the events, and you know, over and over, you know, to the hill, you know, out in the into the public, and yet people said, well, you know, he didn't really care about it. He didn't really want to get it done. And I think there's a certain sense of almost, you know, that there was a magic wand that could be waved to to get something done, particularly when he was working with the Congress that in many instances was quite recal rec recalcitrant. I think what's happened now is that the last election and the various interests, I mean, the business community desperately wants to move immigration forward, mo uh, much of it. The agricultural community desperately wants to move this forward, and all of those interests together are bearing down on Congress to move something forward and to compromise. But I also think that Congress, and we've touched on this, um, or Washington can be a lagging indicator for what the rest of the country wants. And you know, you look at an issue like the Farm Bill that recently went down. I mean, regional interests have now been um, placed in a secondary position to political interest um, in a way that doesn't really make sense. You look at the debate that we had about gun control, another place where the president went all out, you know, in response to your question, and the American people wanted to get something done, even though we, I would argue, was a pretty narrow piece of legislation and certainly not comprehensive enough, and still those interests could not, could not be met because of various political interests, um, money and other interest groups and advocacy that wouldn't seem to, to let go. And I think that goes to one of the things that, um, that George was saying, that the public also has to be attuned and has to be responsible for those that they send to Washington, whether they sit in 1600 or whether or not they sit on Capitol Hill. Yeah, but Rita, uh, of course a, the president should do more. I think we all agree, he ought to do more of that. And of course it would be helpful. But the effect is greatly exaggerated. A member of Congress who will cast a vote just because the president put his arm around him doesn't belong in office.